time before work and I said you know what let's just get out here and ride around and enjoy the scenery enjoy the weather get some fresh air and I'm just chilling I'm just enjoying the view because I meant to get out earlier ride around get a haircut and none of that happened so I finally got out got the bike out and decided you know what I'm just gonna mosey around probably end up riding around go run by the lake look at the water eat some lunch and just chill but yeah that's like so I said I was like, gonna run up to Raleigh this morning and get a few odds and ends and run over up to cycle gear and just kind of just kind of have a nice little relaxed ride and I never did any of that so here we are made it this far so anytime you make it out the house get on the bike it's a good day it's like I know it's gonna be freezing cold when I go home tonight but I'll survive that that's not that big of a deal to me I'd much rather just get some actual like just riding around time today a lot of times I gotta go but today I haven't even been bothered to thinking about passing this car I mean it crossed my mind and I was like no I'm just not feeling it like sod farm out there they look just got some ground cover out There's some cows up here in a second, or at least they might be tuckered down somewhere in the woods chilling. Sometimes they're out of front. There's a couple of them. Yeah. It's nice seeing the farmland out here again. It's been such a long time since I've ridden up this way. I haven't even gone up this road yet this year. It was like the first time just seeing it in the late winter, a little bit before spring or whatever. And it's like I'm just having a nice little relaxing time and then of course he's going to stop instead of making the turn. And that's just what happens. the older I get the more I realize that sometimes it's just more enjoyable to go ahead and slow down and take things slow and just just chill I know in the past I've not been a very chill person and I'm still not much of one I gotta go 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 wide open and uh, I'm starting to mellow out just a little bit not in so much hurry just enjoying things as they go I'll be like as we get older, it's that's just kind of what happens. You just kind of mellow out a little bit. Some people take longer than others. But, I never want to get boring. I always want a little bit of excitement in my life. And that's just kind of like where I'm at now. I'm slowing down and starting to enjoy things more. But, I don't want to slow all the way down. I still want to go wide open quite a bit. This seems to have like slightly changed recently. Like a lot of this land value is going up in price. And it's just getting a little more interesting.
that are up kept nice. Um, you see a lot of like older family farm style houses. And a lot of them are still nice. And then like in the back you see like new houses. That are probably either like grandkids or kids of the older house people. And you just see kind of like generations. They move a little bit back or a little bit up or a little to the side. I think that's kind of cool. And of course, we wouldn't be in North Carolina without a Dollar General. We've passed like two already today, one before I turned the camera on. And, you know, you got a church, you got a Dollar General. That's how you know you're in North Carolina, is they're both on the same corner. That's just kind of how it is. It's a nice blue roof, bluer steel roof on that farmhouse. That's kind of cool. And of course, you got your red barn in the back, shop in the back. Big house, double garage, old barns, older farm equipment. You know, that's kind of how I grew up. And to me, it's just cool to still see it. People still taking care of stuff. Like, you got a farm building back in the back. You got a big barn behind the house, and you got grandkids or uh, parents that live in there. All the farm trucks out there in the field, they're doing work. Looks like it's about lunchtime, so everybody's headed to lunch. Yeah, again, see big barn on the back, smaller house in the front, newer house to the side. Yeah, just general old country living. That's kind of my goal, find a spot similar to that at a reasonable price, which is a lot harder than you would think. Land has gotten expensive, houses have gotten expensive, and none of it is what I would consider reasonably priced. I mean, I've never thought it was worth paying $100,000 for a house and all this stuff, but... Now everyone's asking 200000 and I just really don't feel like it's worth it. Me, I'm not very much on living arrangements. I don't. I need a pair of minimal stuff to be happy. Like, as long as it's warm enough, my bed stays in the same spot. And, you know, that's really all I give a crap about. All the rest of the stuff is kind of inconsequential. At least to me right now. Other people may feel different. But, you know, that's just kind of all. So it's like, it's, I don't necessarily want to live in a single wide, but, um, you know, I don't really want to pay a lot of money for a house where I spend some time, but not a lot. Most of the time I'm gone, I'm out and about. I don't want to pay for something I'm not going to use or not going to be there. Now, I will pay for a nice garage or a shop, you know, that's, that's different to me. I will spend time there. And, you know, that to me, that's where I'll be. You know, everybody else, on the other hand, they probably want, like, nice kitchen, nice living room, the guest rooms. I'm just not into all that. I just need somewhere I can cook some food. Um, like I said, I don't even have a kitchen at the moment. I just use a fireplace, hot plate, and microwave. And I cook pretty good off of that. Like I said, you'd be shocked how well you can cook if you know what you're doing. And I can cook. A lot of people can't, but I can cook, and, you know, I feel like that's a really good life skill that, uh, if you want, if you want to eat, you got to be able to cook, at least in my opinion. You can just buy food, buy food, buy food, but eventually, you're going to need to cook something, and, you know, especially if you want to impress the ladies. Food, and good food that tastes way better than they are expecting from you, is a clear winner in my book. It's never let me down. And of course, the shock and awe factor is like when they uh, eat your food that's it's not bad, and then they realize it's actually good. And uh, that's all it takes. They'll be back. They say I'm going to eat man's hardest through the stomach. Well, it works just as good for women. Sometimes better. Because they don't have to cook, much less do the dishes. So... You know, that's an automatic easy W right there. I mean, it's, it's kind of a shock to me just how easy it is. 
You go out to them and you talk to them, you feed them, and then all of a sudden, guess what? They're coming back from someone for another Dollar General. And there's a church on the corner and a fire department, volunteer fire department. So that's how you know you've made it. The real question is, can we maneuver the stop sign without stopping? About putting our feet down, left, right, left, right, yes! Heavy to put your feet down, you're legally required to, but no one actually wants to. But if you're in South Dakota, put your feet down, because they will write you a ticket for it. Never happened to me, but it does happen to a lot of people that don't know. Uh, if you go to like church or something, put your feet down. It'll save you some money. Because they, uh, they watch for it. Car backing up for wide alert. Maybe he's pulling forward. Who knows? Never worth the risk. Tacoma. More old houses with barns. Always interesting. You, you'll be shocked what people have in their barns. You know, whenever I meet someone new or I go on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace to go buy something out of somebody's barn, it's kind of sketchy. They just have old treasure trove and stuff back there. And then uh, you sit out there for like two hours to listen to them talk through all of it, the history of the stuff. Especially they got bikes. If they got bikes, I don't care what it is. I'm interested. I might not have any more money, but I'm definitely interested. Looks like there's a dog. Swamplands. Ooh, there's a nice trail down there. there. Solar panel field. Interesting. They put solar panels anywhere. Actually, there is a river down there. It's just a far, ways farther. Good old Tar River. Some places you would call it a river, some places not so much. But there's good fish in there, as I can attest to. Once it warms up, hopefully I'll spend a lot more time fishing out there. But I like riding motorcycles in. In my at least for me, motorcycles win versus boating most of the time. Well, there's sand in the middle of the road. Glad I didn't hit that. I don't think it would have been anything, but it's a little annoying nonetheless. You get an unexpected input or reaction from your motorcycle, and uh, you just hope you react right. Generally, doing the same thing gets you out of a lot of things. Yeah, this is one of the few turns on this road that can and will mess you up. I've never seen anyone crash here, but it's always been a little iffy or tricky to me. That's like the interesting to me is how you have like roads that create these like triangles and just spots. Like one road goes one way, one road goes the other, and the other road makes the third side of triangles. It's like, why did y'all design it like this? You know, squares are the way we should be doing stuff because in an engineer's mind, that's how everything works. But no, we get weird triangles that are not actually triangles. And you know, you just get weird traffic stuff. It's just like, there's always a story behind all of it too, which is the fun and interesting part, at least to me. Old country store, Express Mart. Those are always fun places to go to. You never know who you'll meet in there, what they have, or what they don't have. More barns. Looks like a farm thing 
back there. Yeah, bonds. Just the amount of small stuff like that is interesting to me. I'd love to have one, but I don't think I love running it. I'd much rather be out riding or enjoying things and spending all my time running a farm or a business that requires a lot of time. I have friends that do do that, and you know, to me, that's awesome. I think this is 581 up here. That's the road I was planning on taking. It'll give me a nice little loop around. And it's fairly fun to ride. What do we have here? A little creek. I've never actually fished there. I probably should. Never really thought about it either. There's a pond. And a lot of no trespassing signs. They really don't want you going in there. Which, I mean, if I owned it, I probably wouldn't want you in there either. But me being the uh, opportunistic fisherman that I am, uh, I like fishing everywhere. So, I do respect the no trespassing signs, though. They seem to be. Oh, this is 39. Eh. You know what? We're just, I don't know if I'm going to take it or not. I don't know. I don't know what I've been told. <laughs> don't know. Yeah, we're going to turn left up here. Because why not? I don't know if I've even been down here before. Maybe once or twice. I don't, I don't really know. Oh, this is the way of Smithfield, huh? I don't know if I passed 581 or not, but we'll just ease over this way for a little bit, and then, uh... I don't know what we're really going to do. I'm just winging it at this point. I don't know what I'm doing. I just know when I got to be at work. So at some point, I'm going to stop, eat my little sandwich, drink my coffee, and then uh, head over to work. That's my plan, and I'm sticking with it. And that's my story. Oh, there's a big old pond back there. Oh, and of course, it's fenced off. No trespassing. You can't fish it. No, go away. We don't want you here. Blah, 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 blah. What if I want to? No one cares what you want. No one cares. They're behind. Oh, yeah. Five County Stadium. The Mudcat Stadium that they're trying to get out of. I don't get it. It seems like a perfectly good stadium to me. But... They want to come to Wilson, or Wilson wants them to come there, and blah, 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 blah. They want to spend a bunch of money and make something cool, and who knows? We already have a baseball team, the Tobs, and if the Mudcats move here, then everyone will go to the Mudcats, and the Tobs will die out, and they're a really historical team, and that would be a shame. But, uh, you know progress always encroaches upon everything. You have progress, and you have generification, and it, or I forget what it's called, but uh, everything gets bought up, resold, chopped up, resold, and the value spikes, and then only certain people can buy it and rent it, and then, and then uh, everybody just kind of moves around in a big old circle over uh, a couple hundred years. And then it falls apart, and then, you know, the process starts over and over again. Yeah, some of these houses are really old and shambly. But uh, some of them are like new double wides. A lot of them are double wides actually. And then you have old farmhouses. Yeah, it's just interesting you see what's been done out here and what hasn't been. Yeah, that's, there's an old boat. That's something that uh, never buy a used boat or an old boat. An old used boat, in my opinion. They never go bad, but they're never good. No one listens to me, though. Plenty of people buy them, 
they have a nice fancy lawn ornament that doesn't look good you know it is what it is I've been guilty of buying a few things in the past that were lawn ornaments because either the project was too much I got over my head or you know yet quit caring about it and eventually someone will take it off your hands for less money to use as their lawn ornament you know $500 used boat project let's do it but you have a $700 lawn ornament because you put some money in it and realized it was a lot worse than what you thought and then now you have a $700 lawn ornament and the $700 lawn ornament uh, can become someone else's $300 lawn ornament and the process never ends eventually someone might just drop by a couple grand and fix it but slim and few doesn't usually happen huh, condominiums three car garages they had me in three car garages now that I was interested all of a sudden this might be uh, maybe this is the place I'm thinking of mm, nah I don't know where I'm at I'm lost it's all good Ooh, shopping grow that looks new I don't recall ever being there across from a gas station convenience store and a church see the only thing we're missing is a dollar general i'm sure after a couple of years there'll be one there too they just seem to pop up like weeds there's an intersection in the middle of nowhere oh old sinclair oh that's cool that's actually really cool that's a oh i might need to remember that and take a picture someday 39 I've definitely been down here before but it's been a long time I remember that seeing that gas station Miata. another pond I don't see any signs we could fish there at least till we get kicked out I like going fishing in places that uh, are less accessible or a little off the beaten trail. To me, that's exciting. I really want to buy a dual sport so I can ride back there and go fishing. But until then, the road glide will suffice. This road glide's probably been way on more off-road stuff than uh, most road glides probably ever should. But, you know, it doesn't matter. Any bike's an off-road bike if you're brave enough or don't care enough. Either way. Now, I'm clearly one of the few that like, oh yeah, anything go off-road. You just be a little more careful. But, uh, yeah. It looks like we are in the trailer old part, old house part. And I still don't know where I'm going. Uh, power station substation transfer station splitter oh we ran over some road debris looked like a dinner plate yeah, it looks like this guy's about to stop somewhere acting sketchy with no turn signal there is a turn signal last second Three weeks to turn, driving like you got a wedding cake in the back. That's what I always imagine someone having when uh, when uh, they're driving slow and take forever to turn. I just imagine they got a wedding cake in the back. You know, that's the only legitimate reason I can think of to drive like that. Oh, I got a wedding cake in the back. Oh yeah, perfectly. That's a great, great reason. I think we might turn left up here. What do you think? Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing, but here we go. Might just keep running us all the way down to Smithfield. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. No one knows what I'm doing. And we're just going to keep doing it, so I'm going straight. They said it went down to Smithfield. If I end up in Smithfield, that's just fine with me. Like I said, I'm, I'm lost. I'm not really lost, but I'm not paying attention to where I'm actually at at the moment. 
you know, another 30 minutes I'll really start paying attention, but if we don't get to somewhere that I know where I'm at by then, I'm not too worried. It's been a long time that I've gotten out and just ridden around and bullshitted and not worried about a whole lot of stuff. Saturday. You know what that means. Hey, that's why everybody's home and about. I'm an idiot. I thought it was like middle of the work week. Uh, I've lost complete track of time. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, who's doing what. I don't know any of it. I'm just like, Ugh, until I make a nice trip, vacation, and the rest of the days just kind of all blend in together. You know, it's just kind of how it works. I, I thought today was like Wednesday or I don't know. I, I'm lost. It's alright. I'll figure it out or I'll just wait till someone else tells me, Hey, uh, you need to be here or there. Yeah, I'll go to work tomorrow probably just out of habit. And, uh, I'll drive by and won't see anyone there. And I'll be like, oh, I guess we're not working today. Everybody asks me, how do you know whether we're working or not? Oh, I just drive by it every day and if there's nobody there, I keep driving. Hey, well, how can you do that? I mean, uh, it's fairly obvious. If I don't see anyone there, I go do something else. I mean, it worked like 300, 300 plus people, you know. You'll know if they're working or not. You'll have a good clue. I've showed up a couple times like, hey, are we working today? Nah, man, there's a hurricane. We ain't working. Oh, no. no. Uh, well, I'm here. You want me to work? Nah, go home. All right. Go to the grocery store. Get the bread, the eggs, and the milk. And then uh, go home and eat absolutely none of it. Eat everything else. And then wait till that stuff goes bad. So... That's why I don't buy that anymore. I just buy canned goods. Can't go wrong with canned goods. The beef stew in a can is just as good six months later as it is the day you bought it. Sometimes it tastes better because you didn't know you had it. You found it. Add a little bit of spice, maybe some hot sauce, a whole bunch of random stuff off the shelf or in the fridge. Throw it in a pot, stir it up, and all of a sudden you've got something that tastes amazing. Or really bad, depending on what you put in it. Experience is a key factor. At least, that's been my experience. I've had some that turned out really bad. And uh, I've gotten a little bit wiser from making mistakes like that. Most of mine turn out really good. Some of them turn out edible, and you know, that's regrettable, but it is what it is. Speaking of which, I still have an ear shoulder. I ought to make a stew out of that. That'd be, that would be a smart thing to do. Oh, I can chill for some Chinese food. Oh, I might need to just go get some tomorrow. That seems like a great idea. You know what? That's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Get Chinese food. I could, I could kill for some good Chinese food. Dumplings, uh, orange chicken, you know. Uh, obviously, uh, egg drop soup is my favorite. Everybody hates on it, but to me, it's just good. Creech Church Road. I still don't know where I'm at. Oh, there's 42, obviously. Okay, I know where I'm at. Dang it. Just when I thought I was getting away. I know exactly where I'm at now. What if I keep going, though? 42 goes to Clayton. Holy shit, I'm over here. I'm way the fuck over here. Take 42 back. Go down to Smithfield. 
And of course, no one knows how to use a roundabout, so here we are. No one still knows how to use a roundabout. At this point, it's to be expected. You just go. And if you can't go, you slow down and then go. How complicated could it be? Very complicated. Everybody stop. Because uh, it's a foreign material. Micro 10 miles? Huh. Holy shit. I am kind of like in the middle of nowhere. Huh. Interesting. Let's look at the map. Ooh, we are in the, uh, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, we're going to 301.95. We'll just keep going this way till we hit it, I reckon. Good enough for me. Back to our previously scheduled programming. It's like the more I do, ooh, cool tractor. Uh, the more I do, uh, just riding around and talking. To me, this is actually I'm really enjoying it. Just talking out loud and um, just kind of putting my thoughts out there. It's not the most organized. I'm sure I'll get better at it, but you know, it's just one of these things that as I'm riding around, it's kind of an older, cool house. It looks like it's been added on. Cool. Just look at the stuff that I find interesting. Oh, there's a tow truck. Get on a bike. That's something you just don't see anymore. I don't see a lot of kids on bikes. I know uh, growing up, that was a big thing. We all had bikes. We rode all over the place. We rode a lot of places we shouldn't have ridden. But, uh, but I remember we go across to other towns to visit friends and stuff. Of course, didn't hash. So I'm gonna go ride the bike. The next thing you know, you're one town, two towns over on a bicycle, and uh, your parents are like, "Where are you? Where were you at?" Oh, I went over here. They're like, "Never do it again." And you're like, uh, "Why? Because uh, it was dangerous." It was, well, everything's dangerous. Do it anyways. Take your risk. You know, just do it smartly. Now, I just do it on a motorcycle because I'm fat and lazy. And it's more fun. Mostly because it's more fun. I'm a little bit fatter. I'm not near as in shape as I was when I was riding a sport bike for hours and hours every single day. I, I kind of miss that. I would love to do it again, but uh, my body is not in the same shape and I don't recover as easy. I would, it would take some getting used to. I can still jump on a sport bike and ride and ride and ride, but I don't feel the same anymore. I need to like do some conditioning and uh, actually get in shape. But I bought the Harley because it was much more feasible and I have storage. I got to the point where I needed more storage because, you know, storage is versatility. Versatility is good. But I do miss the sport bike. The, the maneuverability was awesome. This bike's not bad, but I have a lot more work to do to get it to a level that where it would be close to a sport bike. Don't get me wrong, it's it's an incredible machine and I've made it a lot more efficient, but my main complaint's the brakes. The brakes ain't all that. And uh, I've improved them a little bit, but I need new rotors, I need to get some actual better calipers, and then oh, I gotta change the brake fluid. I got the Harley brake fluid, it boils at like 300 degrees, it's kinda crappy. It's, it's made for not to wear out, but not to be abused like I would abuse it. So it's, I just kinda chill ride most of the time now. I'm not hammering on the brakes like uh, I would. The few times I went in the mountains and hammered the brakes, like aggressively, uh, I got some pretty decent brake fade, and I was a little worried about that, so I just backed off and chilled. Hey, by chill, I mean I just kept riding just as hard, with, but gave myself a little more room. And obviously, that was before uh, 
I got the big motor and did a lot of other upgrades and uh, I'm really excited to go back out there and just hammer the mountains again like I really really think it'll do good like the bike is really set up for that so at least to me I think that would be a whole lot of fun probably did at least in the past that was what I would have done interesting intersection it's always an interesting intersection when you have nothing on two out of the four corners one of them looks like it's actual house someone lives in maybe maybe The other one, also a house someone might live in. And the second one, it looks like living. live in. The first one looks like it was a store. Just kind of interesting. Of course, it is Saturday, so... Saturday has a very different vibe than a lot of the other days. Okay, to me, it seems like a lot of people are out in town or just inside, not doing a whole lot. I get it, it's not like super warm. Ooh, that's a big pool. Elevated outdoor pool. And you know they spent some money on that, and that's a lot of maintenance. And a barn that's about, oh, it looks like a house that's about knocked down halfway. And as a kid, that'd be the perfect playground. As an adult, that's a terrifying thing to see. Because, you know, first thing you want to do, you want to go over there and kick it. Finish the job. And then you realize actually how much work that is after you've done it before tearing a house down is not for the faint of heart you're like oh yeah we'll just knock it down and then you're like oh crap there's a giant pile of crap out here that uh, is going to take forever to haul off and if you've ever picked up sticks like knocking over a house for demo is about the same as like taking a pack of cards and throwing it in the living room everyone wants to see it happen no one wants to deal with the aftermath 52 card pickup the game everyone loves for the first two seconds and hates for the rest of the time doing it does that sounds like a true Harley this one sounds I don't know not like a Harley but like a Harley I don't know how to describe it give it some good old exhaust pops god I love that though to me that just like you get halfway off the throttle just feather it and go ba -ba 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 boom Ah, it just feels so satisfying. Like it just sounds good. Which a lot of people don't like it in. You know, a lot of tuners will be like, "That's not good." But it's not good if uh, that's what you're going for. You're just going for maximum banks. But a little bit here and there is acceptable. A lot of times it means the air is getting in. And you don't want really want air getting back in. And 
see. Oh, this is the one up here. Oh, interesting, interesting. Very interesting. Do I turn or do I go? Looks like I'm going. Yeah, we'll just follow this down. Selma. Middle school, Selma Middle School. And now we're going right into the town. Uh, I think I'm gonna turn around at the railroad tracks, go by the rail yard. I might just ride around that way. Seems like the thing to do. Is this Selma or I think this is Selma. Yeah, this should be Selma. definitely Selma. This is one of them cities that back in the day people didn't get out of Selma alive. You went out in a casket or a tombstone and there's a lot of bad blood in here. I mean a lot and it's somewhat faded out but I work with a guy that's from here and he said there's been many guns tossed into the creek over the bridge. He said if you go down there you will find some and uh he said uh, he knows they're down there because he threw quite a few down there when he was a kid and a teenager, young adult growing up because you had to fight to survive and that was that's not a joke like it was literally like urban warfare down here and uh, it's quieted down compared to back then but you still have a lot of like bad blood, racism and a lot of that stuff in here and you know you would think that it's progressive, it's on I-95. Well, no, nah, it just, you got money, you got drugs, you got bad blood. It's kind of just a bad combination for a lot of different things. Not saying that uh, you can't have a good life down here. It's just there's a lot of extracurricular stuff that went on and the after effects still kind of linger. I do have quite a few people I know and ride bikes with and hang out with that come down here and they live in this area or around this area and um, I've been coming down here quite a while and it just is what it is. Might ride by the bar or whatever up here just to kind of check it out but I'm, I'm not, I don't really have too many connections unlike a lot of people I know. A lot of people I know that come down here and uh, they'll just hang out or whatever. Oh yeah, it's a gas station. Me and uh, Reggie was stopped at after we picked up his bike when we bought his bike. That was a journey in and of itself. But uh, he ended up with a really sick, really cool looking bike. And uh, it looks amazing, sounds amazing. Ooh, old gas station. Amico, now that's cool. That's cool. I'm a sucker for an old gas station or old oil company. Like, they made the, no, what is it? I know it was way before my time, but just like the, uh, the history and uh, nostalgic value that's there to me, that's just interesting and uh, something I like to see. I don't always stop at them, but it's cool. And I don't think it'll ever not be cool. You know, I don't collect it or anything like that. Maybe if I had a shitload of money, I would. Well, you know how that goes. They have an audio store up here. I might just stop up there and... Uh, see what they got obviously I do my own audio and eh you know a lot of the audio stores are just like they got shitty stuff you can buy better stuff but uh I've never been to this one so see if they're open I might slide in there see if I can upgrade my speakers maybe I'm probably not going to spend any money but I'll look around and bullshit you never know what you might find
but it's not like I can come down here and just get ready to flash. I got a bullshit setup that I came up with as a workaround. I put the boom radio in and that was kind of shitty and crappy and I didn't enjoy that. It was better than the stock, but not by a lot. If I didn't get it cheap as hell, I would have never even considered putting it in. This has only run the front two speakers. Now I got the boom amp in there and all it does is run the little tweeter grills, which are not even that good either. So, you know, it's just low quality, not so good stuff. And then uh, I got two SCAR uh, Pro Audio six and a half. And uh, they, they're not great. They're good, they're loud, they're, don't have like a massive frequently response like they go low and mid they're mostly mid range speakers and they put out a lot of volume and they're only like 20 25 26 bucks they're not expensive i put them in there because if they blew up i wouldn't care and i've never really swapped them out and i'm not sure what i'd swap them out with i've seen some uh I think they're like 100 watts a piece or 200 watts a piece. Like they're they put out some volume and take a lot of power. Um, I've seen uh, I put some NVXs in my buddies. They're a lot clearer. Seem to be a lot better made. Uh, they got a carbon fiber shell or a cone, and those were cool. And I'm just gonna get over. I think it's up here in a bit. But it's like I, I just kind of want to see what they got to offer. Look at specs. I'm big on the specs having to match what I got. And because I got over, we got stuck in a red light. Yeah. Oh well. It is what it is. No, oh, that's the one cool thing about the Rogue Glide. If you use the Hill Assist, uh, your back brake tail light will stay on. It'll stay lit. Like, if you have the Hill Assist on, the brake light's lit up. I mean, that's kind of a cool feature. You know, you just pull the lever, you hold the brake, pull it back more, and then let go, and then your brakes are locked. But it locks your front and your back brakes to the ABS module. And uh, it has your brake light on at the same time, so you don't have to sit there and hold it. As long as you hold the clutch lever, you're good. As soon as, like, you gotta go and let the clutch out, it all shuts off. Or, a lot of times, I just disengage it by squeezing the front brake again, because, I don't know, to me, I just, don't necessarily like the idea of leaving on it but it works it just works you know one of those cool things that work great in like riding around but uh when you're trying to be a hooligan uh it gets really annoying really fast so i just unplug my rear wheel sensor and you know it disables like all the electronics on the bike and it throws like an error code blah 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 the bike doesn't like it but everything works you can be a hooligan uh, if, I, if I had to do it again, I'd probably just get the bike without all the extra stuff, all the electro electronics. But the Hill Assist is super nice. I just wish there was an easy way I could disable it. And uh, instead of like having to unplug something or use a workaround solution. I hate workaround solutions. They work, but that's not right. And uh, it's annoying to me. Like, you should just have it to where you can, you should give people the options to, you know, use your stuff the way they want to. But that opens up a whole nother legal loophole and liability and ugh, all that crap. Hate that stuff. We're just over here sliding through the Smithfield. I'm gonna have to head back before too long. Already 120. I definitely need to leave before two. I def I really need to leave, but like 145 at least to head down. But God, uh, I love working weekends and I hate working weekends at the same time. It's a love hate relationship. Definitely a love. 
love-hate relationship. stoplight real slow and easy like uh, you forget that uh, this bike's way faster than a lot of vehicles out here like it gets up and it goes and boogies when it wants to you know most of the time I'm just I'm riding like super careful I'm not trying to be stupid I thought about popping a wheelie coming out of there I just nah just not feeling it Seventy, loop back around. Yeah, I guess I passed the store. Eh, who knows? If you don't see it, you don't have to go in. If you don't go in, you don't have to spend money. And there it is, right there. And we're just gonna not go in there. Probably wise move on my part. I, I will probably spend money I shouldn't spend. Blah, 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 blah. I would go by the Harley place, but there's there's no reason for me to go there. I might go there and just eat my uh, lunch and look at some bullshit and see who else is over there. You know what? That sounds like a great idea. I can go over there bullshit for like 20 minutes and, you know, just kind of chill. Maybe Sprocket will be over there. Maybe not. Who knows? Nah, he, I think his bike's still tore up. Who knows? He could have duct taped it up and been riding. You know, that, if it were me, that's what I would have done. But you never know. Ah, traffic sucks. Why did I come down here? All right, because you got lost and ended up on the road to here. That's why you're down here. He didn't want to hear it. Classic. Classic. Ah, not that I blame anybody. You know, it's pretty obnoxious. Most bikers rev the piss out of it. And I really wanted to, but I was responsible. I just gave it a smidge of gas. Yeah, dang, it is kind of loud. be the irresponsible person and go out here drink my coffee eat my chicken sandwich bullshit at the Harley place for a little bit who knows I might buy some stupid shit maybe maybe not no one knows Except the nose. Yeah, old Chevy. Beat up truck covered in mud. I tell you, no, you're in Johnson County. Oh, sheets over there. Town Center Road. Guess what? We're going down Town Center Road just the other way. Kobe. Advertised here. Texas Steakhouse. And checkers, it's not actually there. They actually had pretty good sliders and good food. I uh, actually kind of missed the checkers. It was a nice stop. At least on the bike. You pull over there, you kind of eat in the parking lot, you go blah, blah, blah.
Valley. This is like a really confusing spot to ride through because and nobody knows what they're doing. I do because I've been here so many times, but it's like, oh, go here, go here, go here. Don't turn in here, don't turn in there. That'd be a kind of cool spot to stop. And then there's a roundabout. People don't know how to drive roundabouts in North Carolina. Cool little Mini Cooper. See? Go, go, go. Just go, just go. Both of you, just go. You only stop if you can't get in. Got a Syracuse sticker on the car. That's how you know they're uh, not from New York City. People say they're from New York and 90% of them are from like New York City or lived up there for a little bit. It's like, oh, I lived in New York City for a year. I'm from New York. No, you're really not. You're from New York City and that's not New York. This is halfway between Miami and New York, so no surprise you see a shitload of people here. looked at my bike but this is my bike 130 ish cubic inch motor you know uh, really fast I'm not gonna go into detail in the setup because I do race it so it's a secret you know not a big secret but a little secret you can kind of figure out what's been done if you know what you're looking at like there's a lot of little nice little pieces on the bike and like I said it's more of a budget race build fun bike but um it's an interesting bike it's kind of pieced together and i made a lot of the stuff that goes on it and uh there's some really cool other bikes out here like this indian is cool and uh the victory i really like the victory man that orange does it for me like he's got a nice setup he's got eight inch speakers i'm assuming he's got six by nines or six and a half in the fairing Two more eights in the back man i mean oh it's just cool and he's got a 106 motor in it so decent sized motor the whole bike just looks cool it flows uh, the bag lids are a little chunky to me but yeah overall the bike just looks cool we got inverted front forks which i just realized that today you know he's got um radial calipers and all the good stuff that my road glide doesn't have you know i've got a lot of cool stuff on mine that his doesn't have but his brakes look way better. Uh, I got these kind of OEM Brembo's still. That's the next like major upgrade is my braking system. But uh, anyways, I gotta get to work and I am intending to leave. So I have time to go to work and don't have to rush. But we'll see. Let's just see if it works. A 
let everybody get out of the way. Looks like we're going right. Yeah, they're remodeling it and upgrading and extending that one building, so it'll be a lot nicer. It's under in progress right now, so you know how that goes. It'll be a little while, but at least hopefully it'll be done in the spring. Not clear left. Not really clear right. And of course this guy's turning, so where I would have tried to shoot out, uh, it looks like I'm gonna try to get out after that van. Yeah, after this car and this white man should be good. There we go. Give it some gas. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it just, ugh, it feels great. The sound, the noise, the power. Ah, oh, that's what it makes you really just fall in love with this bike every time I get on it. It's not like, it doesn't feel like it's aggressive, but it's way more aggressive than you would expect. Like, you know, I'm kind of used to it, so. Uh, it comes to like bikes and the power and the numbers and performance like I'm really jaded like I've read some crazy stuff like regularly and so My perception is just skewed so far to the uh, the fast side that like I consider this bike slow and it's really not It's really actually extremely fast, you know, it's like 800,000 pound bike, you know, and it boogies like I'm not gonna like put the numbers out there for everybody, but uh, it's fast. It's seven seconds somewhere in there fast. And you know, I'm working on getting it into six seconds. So I probably just need to spend more money and get some more work done. But it's it's a solid guaranteed seven second uh, eighth mile bike. And uh, we're in there, it falls, mind your business. But it's in there, you know. Um, and it's nowhere near set up for drag racing either. It's this is a mountain bike. Like it's designed to rip back roads, uh, corner, and like it's tall. The bike has a lot of ground clearance. It's definitely not set up for drag racing, and it still does it very well. Uh, like the the bike leaves good. It doesn't really like the wheelie. Uh, I can make some adjustments, make it better or worse, whatever. But this thing boogies. Oh, you know, it's like we got a drag race coming up into April, A1 cash days. I'm going to at least go down there. Probably won't win. Don't really expect to win. But I don't expect to be eliminated quickly. I'm hoping that uh, I can go at least a couple rounds. Hopefully I win one or two races. And, you know, then someone actually, that's actually really fast, knocks me out. But I'm not going to be a pushover, hopefully. They're gonna have to earn their lunch money if they want to get me out of there. So that's my at least my thoughts process or my plan. I'm about to jump out here on uh, old 995. Hate this road, love this road, gotta ride this road. Like it's just it's one of those roads that you're gonna get on it, you're gonna use it. It is what it is. Some places it's bad. It used to be really bad through Smithfield. They've mostly redone it. It's not that bad. This is, uh, yeah, this is actually the exit. It ended up in that field uh, when I was first learning how to ride. And, uh, like I said, this thing boogies when you need it to. Swiggity, swiggity, it's time to boogie. Always caught by surprise when uh, you boogie on them. 
Oh, Fox Bunny. Oh, that's clean. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's sexy. You know, it's a little, a little bit kind of like when I was a kid growing up. That was the cool car. I've never been a huge fan of them until I realized they could be made fast for cheap. And I'm like, ooh, yeah, baby. Fast and cheap, that's all me. Mostly because anything fast comes out of my pocket and uh, I don't have the deepest pockets. I have some money and a lot of people can spend money better than me. They also can make it better than me. Which is probably why I'm going to work today and uh, not spending more money. This guy just does not want to get over, does he? I don't really want to blast by him because uh, there's a rest stop up here and uh, if you know anything about rest stops, the police like them. I already make a lot of noise, so we're just gonna try to ease on by. Wind's a little rough, but we'll be alright. Getting a lot of wind shear and shake. Giving me the shimmies. I still got the stock swing arm on this bike, so like I said, it's not perfectly set up it's just very well set up and uh, stuff like this the little shimmy is not exactly the most comfortable thing to experience but it's not bad you know like I said I get a little bit of the helmet shear this is manageable this is fine like the dog in the house burning down this is fine that's what it is like right now if he wants to get over and let me through because I'm not I'm not zipping around him with this wind you know I'm not I'm not, I got plenty of time I don't got a boogie right now damn it I kind of don't I might need to boogie I don't need to boogie you might want to boogie nah I'm good yeah if I go we're gonna take a peek yeah we got a boogie
gotta put your foot down and be like, I'm gonna stump on ya. That's alright, we're getting off here in a little bit. Truck stop, big old truck stop, big boys, travel center. Literally just a truck stop. I mean, if you're in a car, just go down to the, uh, this next gas station or the bank or uh, one or two exits down and it's much nicer. But for a truck stop, that's your spot. I mean, you got truck stop road. Oh, come in the shop. I wouldn't have the shop if your stuff didn't break down, am I right? Yeah, but here's, here's where I usually stop. Go to Kenley, the 95. And then you got, there's another truck stop down there on the right, but, you know. I've been down to that one, too. It's actually fairly nice, but Kenley, I-95, you know, I think it's a Petro. Yeah, Petro. Uh, that's the place to stop at. It's got a bunch of knickknacks, curio store, giant truck stop, you know. If you've never been, you should go at least once in your lifetime. It's one of them places. It's kind of like south of the border, but a truck stop. Oh, a flappy bumper. our escape off of the treacherous I-95. The real Ken Lee. Not the, uh, the Petro. That's like the other half of Ken Lee. This is the real Ken Lee. There's a food line. You know, you got like a few other knickknacks. There's actually nothing in Ken Lee. It's just, they have a truck stop. And, uh, like I said, that's the old part about this spot, this place in North Carolina. It's halfway between New York and Miami, so, you know, it's just kind of how it goes. You know, you got a old country redneck truck in a Colorado, what is it, a V6, I think? Maybe. I can't really read it. You know, old Circle K. We usually stop there on a lot of bike rides back. Usually coming back to South Carolina might be about out of gas might be tired whatever we stop there a lot smaller gas station still got everything you need not the big one we stop at the big one on the way out and you stop at a little on the way home because you just don't want to deal with people and you're tired but the big one's cool on the way out just kind of the way everything gets done you're all excited you want to leave from a fancy gas station the bougie spot for all you bougie people oh there's a nice old Ford those are tanks, like just straight up tanks. And of course, Tundra's, Tundra's like a new tank. I suspect those trucks will be around for forever. Toyota built them well. The newer turbo V6 is, yeah. Turbo four cylinders. It's not a real truck motor. A little power stroke. Yes, sir. Probably doesn't even make 300 horsepower, but it'll pull anything you hook it to just good trucks those are like actually made to last they got a nice classic body style like that's a good good uh good fancy truck i have a van with the same motor and uh it's just not as classic as a truck but uh they're great for towing they get pretty good gas mileage like i get like 20 22 miles a gallon yeah on diesel that's pretty good Especially for like a 3500, 250, 2500, however you want to classify it as. But uh, that's pretty darn good. Ah, yes, I think we're making excellent time. actually nice how they repaved this section I mean oh boy this used to be kind of rough there were like potholes and all kinds of stuff like it's actually a nice section right through here we gotta be kind of careful they, they like to have speed traps you know nice roads wide open people want to go 
and then you end up with speed traps. You know, just the way human nature works. You know, if you have a skinny, narrow road, guess what? People aren't going to speed. If uh, you have a wide open road like this, people are just going to fly because they feel safe. May or may not actually be safe, but if they feel like it, they're going to do it. Like I said, they redid. They got to turn around through there. That's nice, I guess, for the trucks going in there. That was a nice touch. New facility. A uh, whole bunch of cool stuff. Sutter National Motorsports Park. They got a circle track down there. I think it's a. I think it's actually paved racetrack. I've been out there like once and maybe twice. Never, never really been something I was super interested in. Uh, even though I love racing, it's just never got into that. You kind of need family support. It wasn't something that uh, we were really interested in. Speaking of the uh, the devil, there he goes, following the old classic car. The only good thing about being a Harley, they think you're slow, even though we're going like 10, 15 over. This is why you act like you got some sense and everyone assumes you have some sense. Don't be the nail that sticks up or you'll get hammered. I've been hammered plenty of times. Trust me, I know about this one. But, uh, just the kind of general advice that, uh, you might need to know. Like I said, to a hammer, everything's the nail. Which one gets hit first? The one that sticks up the most. It just kind of is what it is. If I was flying through there, he would have no choice but to do it because of the appearance. But we can just kind of easily boogie on. There's a car about to pull out. Just kind of expect him to pull out. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't. He didn't, but you know. Always got to be ready because idiots abound on these streets. And there's another church. The only thing we're missing is the Dollar General. Luckily, uh, there'll be one up here probably. I don't know if it's a family dollar or a Dollar General, but it's like the North Carolina War between the dollar stores but if you actually go into dollar stores they have like a ton of actual good stuff like you can get your food and uh you know you get your soda your drinks so some of them you can get beer uh wine you'd be shocked what you can get at a dollar store it's like the grocery store but with a whole bunch of other stuff you get some cheap pans spatulas cleaning products knockoff cleaning products that may or may not actually work no. You know, they have like motor oil. They usually don't have motorcycle oil in there, but they'll have like car oil, car lube, and a lot of the car related stuff. So if you get in a bind and you can't make it to a gas station, the dollar store is a safe bet as well around here. You know, everybody that doesn't have a lot of money seems to have a car that barely runs or, you know, doesn't run but somehow makes it there. Running on shoestrings, a hope and a prayer. But people wear don't seem to have a lot of shoestrings these days, so it makes it a little harder to re repair stuff uh, on the side of the road. You'd be shocked how useful a shoestring can be. Like, you know, a little ingenuity, a piece of rope, a piece of string, a piece of bailing wire, all that little kind of stuff. You can fix a lot of things to get you by. Uh, I'm, I'm a firm uh, believer in uh, having some random supplies and a little bit of imagination can get you out of a lot of binds. You know, I don't need a lot to work with, but I need a little bit of something. I mean, there have been plenty of times on the side of the road I've rigged stuff up. Zip ties, wire, rope, you know. 
And the good thing about wire is it always doubles as jumper cables if you're brave enough to hold it in there, you know. Or rig it up to where one side holds, you touch the other, blah, blah, blah. You can, you can make stuff work. Like, I remember this one guy had, like, a dog leash. He uh, cut it in half and used that to jump somebody on the side of the road. Like, I mean, there's not a, like, you know, it's one of them wire dog leashes or whatever. But it was enough to get the job done. Get somebody back moving on the road and uh, safely home. And, you know, it's just kind of shocking. things. like, I keep a jump box, but... Um, I probably do need to, I need to come up with a good emergency kit, uh, and, uh, with all the stuff that, uh, you would commonly use or need, you know, just MacGyver, a MacGyver kit is what, uh, I believe everyone else calls it, but, uh, I need to come up with a MacGyver kit. Oh, we're gonna stop. Red light, green light. Ah! Okay, okay, he's turning. We're good. The question is, do they get the green light or do I get the green light? Maybe they get the green light. Looks like the guy turning gets the short end of the stick. And Dollar General. Little Rock Church Road, Dollar General. Dollar General on every corner. That's their motto. What's that across the street? Looks like it used to be a family dollar. Or something similar. I can't really read the sign on coming soon. Another dollar store! And then of course, see, that's actually a nice gas station down there. It's a little off the beaten trail, but it's fairly nice. Fairly nice and very nice are not the same. The only question is, do I risk going in the front way and risk the wrath of the train, or do I go around the back? Yeah, I'm probably just going to go down the front way and uh, ease my way around. Might take like a little side road. Seems like the, uh, the safe thing to do. in 10 minutes and uh, I believe I will be there in exactly 10 minutes give or take a few if you know what I mean but uh, yeah I, I think we'll be in good shape I'm not really concerned uh, about making it or not well, it seems like we have plenty of time and it is Saturday after all so odds of anything actually happening are, at the moment are slim to none at least as far as stuff blowing up at work and me having to fix it. Yeah, last, uh, this week's been kind of easy. I haven't had a lot of things fail. I have to repair a lot of stuff. It's just been kind of monitoring it and keeping all the idiots in, uh, in line and uh, from shooting themselves in their foot. I don't understand how they've been here for years and years and don't know how to do their job, but they just don't. I mean... It's like, none of this has changed, it's the same thing, you do the same thing over and over, you should be good at it by now, but no, they're just not. And, I mean, I guess most people are, don't have the same outlook, they just come and do the paramedical and leave, and, in my opinion, that's never, uh, I'm ne I would never be satisfied with just being mediocre. I've always have to be, I always either have to be improving, or the best, or if you're not the best, you need to get to the best. And, you know... That's the kind of attitude, at least in uh, maintenance, which is what I do. That's the kind of attitude you need to have. You need to be willing to put in the work to be better, to be the best, or to at least master what you're uh, working on. It's like, you never stop learning. And like, as soon as you give the attitude, like, I just, I'm just doing the bare minimum, that's as far as you'll ever go. Like, you just won't ever make it any farther. Uh, do I go in the back way or not? Back way, back way. Nah, I'm just going to go through town. I'm going to be a responsible, uh, ish today. That should have probably gone the back way. I'm going to, this is probably going to take longer. Seven minutes. Yeah, it should be good.
give it a little juice. This is a sketchy part to be giving it juice though, like, you got Su-64, uh, I-795, and this is 301, so, usually up by these barns or uh, somewhere around here, there'll be a cop floating around. Down there, it's 55. Up here, it's like 45. And the, uh, the distinction is not very, very clear. Like, you don't know which part's which. It's just kind of like, well, just everybody just drives 55 till they get to the light, even though it turns like 45 up here. So it's just one of those. Try not to be an idiot, but if you're gonna be an idiot, don't be a complete idiot. And uh, as we all know, I'm definitely a complete idiot. So, at least an awful lot of things. Good old eight ball cycles. Good place to get work done. But you gotta buy your parts from them. I mean, I completely understand it. Order your stuff through him, he'll do all the work. If you didn't get buy it through him, he ain't touching it. And uh, can't really blame him. I mean, I'm about the same way when I would work on things for people. I said, let me buy the shit. I'll tell you what to buy. Or uh, I'll buy it and then you pay me back when uh, it's finished. Because uh, everybody wants to buy some cheap bull crap that will or won't work. Granted, I'm a shade tree mechanic, at least on bikes. I'm generally cheap and I don't charge people a lot most of the time because I don't care to. Second of all, uh, usually I only work on my friend's stuff to help them out. I'm not trying to make money off of it. So, by extension, I'm not trying to spend their money. He is a professional, so he's trying to make money. So, he also doesn't want to deal with a lot of bullshit. And I completely agree with that. Like, you know, if everybody will order some cheapo bullshit off of Amazon or whatever, and uh, there's Parker's. I like their barbecue, can't stand their chicken. After it tried to kill me one time, I've been good since then. I got attacked by a piece of chicken, it decided to fight me halfway down, and I ended up in the hospital. And ever since then, I have never eaten their chicken and probably never will. But uh, their barbecue sandwiches are great. I mean, definitely recommend corn sticks. Parker's is an experience in and of itself. Just, uh, I don't like the chicken. Like I said, we're, uh, mortal enemies at this point and uh, here's where uh, I hit out see y'all later